Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another tech review, and this one's a little different than my usual reviews. I don't know if many of y'all know, but I am an avid Pokemon fan. I grew up with the anime back in the 90s, back when times were way simpler, and since then, have played many of the main series video games, as well as the ever-popular Pokemon Go that I just got into, like, last year. Actually, this review was inspired by one of my favorite Pogo YouTubers, Pokedaxi. He's a great guy who loves Pokemon just as much as I do, and I want to say he's based out of Canada. I doubt this review will ever reach him, but I want to issue him a fun challenge. I consider myself pretty good at PvP, which is player versus player, so Daxi, if you ever happen to stumble across this video, let's do some Pokemon battles live and we'll do best two out of three. And let's put a nice wager on there. The loser buys a Pokemon Go Plus Plus for one of our lucky subscribers. Let me know if you want to make that happen over on my Twitter. So guys, here on the one and only, we cover all things tech and this small little gadget is extremely useful for any Pogo player. It's essentially an auto catcher and makes grinding on the game seamless, seeing as it does a lot of things passively, even when you're not on your phone. But is it worth its hefty $55 price tag? We'll be answering that question plus so much more, including some live footage towards the end, testing it out in real time. So without further ado, we got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and get things started with a quick unboxing. Alright ladies and gentlemen, here we have it. This is the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Kind of a weird name, I know, having that two pluses in there. But yeah, this is a much bigger device than the original Pokemon Go Plus. Um, but it does come with a ton of enhanced new features. But already what I'm noticing is that, man, there's so much text here. I mean, if you want to pause and read all that, it's like a whole novel back here. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it doesn't seem like... We have any pull tabs, so I will need my handy dandy unboxing scissors. All right, here they are. So now let's just undo these tabs real quick. There we go. All right, now let's just pull up on the tab. And already we can see some Pikachu themed kind of artwork there. Oh, this is really nice. I like the packaging a lot. We do have our Pokemon Go Plus right there at the very bottom. But first, let's see what other goodies we get inside. So this yellow thing is um, another Pikachu themed accessory. And this is essentially for like a lanyard so that you can carry it around and just make transporting the Pokemon Go Plus a little bit easier. So there you go. And then you have a little clip as well. Now, this is crucial because if I recall correctly, the first Pokemon Go Plus accessory used batteries. And so this one is rechargeable. And so we do have a USB to might be USB C it's looking like. I don't think it's proprietary, but we do have this charging cable as well. And now finally, let's go ahead and remove the Pokemon Go Plus itself. There it is. I mean, it's about palm size. Honestly, it's a little bigger than I was expecting. But yeah, guys, there it is. We've got your little main button right here and your charging port down here. So real quick, I'm gonna go over how to set this up with your Pokemon Go account. All right, now that we have it unboxed, it's now time to pair the device, and thankfully the pairing process is relatively straightforward. So first, you wanna make sure your device is charged. So before starting, check to make sure it has some juice. If not, use the provided cable to charge it up for 10 minutes or so. Now, open up Pokemon Go. Hit the Pokeball at the bottom middle, and at the top right, click on Settings. From here, click on Connected Devices and Services, and then hit Accessory Devices. Now here, you can read the instructions on how to pair a new accessory. It's super easy from here, so now, grab your Pokemon Go Plus Plus, and click the middle button once. Your accessory should now appear on the list of available devices. So click on it, and it'll ask if you want to pair it. So of course, hit Yes Pair. And now you'll want to hit the main middle button and the top button at the same time when instructed. You'll know it connected if it vibrates like hell for a good 10 seconds. And yeah, that's the first introduction you'll get to it. That vibration, that sounds like the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. And before you ask, no, there's no way of removing the vibration unless you want to disassemble the device, which is a do at your own risk kind of thing. It's honestly not worth it, but yeah, it vibrates extremely heavy. All right, now that it's paired, you're ready to go, but you'll want to review the menus. 
So as you can see, there are many options. You can have the Go Plus Plus device use regular Pokeballs, Great Balls, or Ultra Balls. So basically, the device will buzz and you simply press the middle button for it to encounter them on and attempt to catch it. It is important to note the Pokemon is not guaranteed to be caught and many times will run away. However, if you want to streamline this process, you can instead opt to toggle the auto throw feature, which eliminates the need to press the middle button on every encounter and instead does it all automatically whenever Mon spawn. The only downside is that only Pokeballs can be used and thus means more Pokemon will likely flee, which does suck, but is a decent trade-off in my opinion if you have your hands tied. I'd also suggest enabling auto spin for Pokestops as it is super useful to stock up on resources, especially when you're going through level 20s and 30s when revives and Pokeballs are hard to come by. You can also toggle push notifications on or off so you can check to see when Pokemon get caught, and you can turn off the Pikachu voice every time it reconnects. But again, oddly, you, you can't toggle the vibration, which is weird. I get silencing Pikachu if you're out in public or whatever, but the vibration, they're still gonna hear that. But all right, before we get into some live testing, let's quickly recap this device's features. Again, it retails for $55 and has a pretty great battery life, but it largely depends on how often you use it. From my testing, I've had to charge mine only once after four days of moderate to heavy use daily, which is excellent. This makes it so you don't have to charge it up all too often, and so you can just go out and enjoy the spoils of an auto catcher. The device itself is relatively small and lightweight, being easily palmable and can easily fit in one's jean pockets, in a purse, or heck, even throwing it in a bag. Plus, the adjustable string makes it super convenient to attach to your wrist for extended pogo sessions, such as on community days or during raid hours. Then there's the whole sleep tracking thing which doesn't make sense to me other than Niantic looking to fish for even more of your data and probably selling it elsewhere like come on let's be honest here. You do get an exclusive time research for doing this but honestly it takes a long time. The whole process of tracking your sleep is a lot more intricate than one would initially imagine. You need to download the Pokemon Sleep app adding yet another layer of complexity. So the Catching Some Z's exclusive research is a two page research and in total takes 35 days to complete and you will get to encounter a total of five nightcap snorlaxes which can be shiny and it's cool if you get into the routine of doing this daily but inevitably you'll miss a night or two adding even more time until you finally complete it. Now before we get into some live testing I did want to give a piece of advice to all you shiny hunters and basically anyone who participates in calm days or go fest. So because shiny rates get increased for Calm Days and Pokefest, I highly advise you to turn off the auto catch. Reason being is that again, the catch rate is abysmal, nearly 50% when you do the auto catch since it only uses Pokeballs. So last thing you want is to have most of your shinies run away simply because the auto catch feature can only use standard balls. Instead, turn off auto catch and just have the device in your hand while you're walking or at a restaurant or park, wherever you may be, and just wait for it to vibrate and click the middle button to throw ultra balls instead. The catch rate will be way higher. This is what I did recently for the Froki Calm Day and caught a total of 19 shinies while I was at the mall with my brother. It was great. Unless your hands are absolutely tied, then something is better than nothing, I guess. In that case, the auto catch feature is fine. But if you have at least one hand free, definitely switch it off so that you can use ultra or great balls to increase your chances of catching more shinies and have less mons run on you. Alright, so now let's switch over to some live footage of me using the device downtown. Let's go. Okay guys, so check this out. We're out here. I got the Pokemon Go Plus Plus here in my pocket. And let me go ahead and start my screen recording. So guys, in order for this to start working, check it out, it's really simple. You can do this one of two ways. If you press it, you guys might not be able to see from the camera, but it should light up. This will act, essentially activate the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, or if you go here actually to the Pokemon Go app, which it should be on screen right now, but you just click on that, it's connecting right now, and you should hear the Pikachu. There it is. Once Pikachu does his little mascot cry, even though that's not his official cry, you know you're ready to rock and roll. So guys, already looks like we caught a Vigoroth, or at least is trying to right now. Um, once again, the thing is with the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, it, it's only using Pokeballs. You can't use Great Balls or Ultra Balls. Why? I don't know, I wasn't at the meeting. 
But here, follow me, because the other cool thing about the Pokemon Go Plus Plus is you can see whenever it's green, that was a successful capture. Sometimes the Pokemon will flee and that's when it'll turn red. Okay, so keep on coming. And guys, I'm gonna show the screen recording on screen because there is also there is also an auto spin for the Pokestop. So this is really, really convenient. And for any of you guys ever short on Stardust, this is the best way to grind Stardust without really doing much. So come on, let's keep going. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pop in incense just so that we can see the true effectiveness of the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. I am in the downtown area of where I live and there's a really big active Pokemon Go Plus community here and I am here for it. Me and my friend Vicente actually just finished raiding some Cresselias. So come on, let's go over here to the bridge. There's always a ton of great Pokemon out here. And at the same time, you can already see all of those purple Pokestops. They've been auto spun and I got several eggs, several items from them. So this thing is just perfect to grind on Pokemon while not really doing much. You could enjoy lunch. You can be talking with your friends. You don't even have to have the Pokemon Go app open. So check that out. I just closed out of the app and this is still vibrating. Now, for some reason, it vibrates really loud and I'm not sure if there's any kind of setting. I don't think there is, but it just, just be warned. It vibrates really, really heavy. So let's get on the bridge and I'll show you. Right now I have the Pokemon Go app closed and it's still vibrating. All right guys, so look, check that out. App is closed and yet it's still out there catching some Mons. At the very end of the video, I'm gonna go through my recent Pokemon caught. That way we can see if we caught any Shinies or any four star. So I'm gonna open up the app just once again. Um, that way we can see the spawns on screen and you guys will be able to see with zero input on my behalf. It just auto catches everything. Here's the thing, do be warned. If you do drop your adventure daily incense and if you do have one of the Galarian birds spawn, be careful because it's gonna wanna throw a regular Pokeball at it and you're probably not gonna get it. So if you are about catching Galarian birds, I would advise not to use this. Go ahead and pop your incense and just be vigilant on what's on screen because a simple Pokeball, chances are you're probably not gonna catch that Galarian bird. But guys, look at that. I mean, my screen is completely blank. Let's keep walking because all of the spawns have already been caught. So there's a bundle bee right now. So it should sense it here in just a second. And hopefully it blinks green. There it is, Pokemon in range. And it's trying to catch it, trying to catch it. Let's see if it does. No! So it blinked red, guys. So that just means that the Pokemon did flee. But then again, it's a Bunnelby, or at least I think that's the name of that Pokemon. It's no big deal. Let's keep going. Now, guys, in the comments, let me know, should I run this Krikatot raid? It's a one star. Probably not, though. All right, so looks like we have, uh, what is that? A Krogunk, we have a Trico, and we also have a Gramble. So again, this is just a great method to actually stack up on your Stardust. So here it is in action again, Pokemon in range. Notice that I'm not doing anything. I was actually just cleaning my glasses and it looks like it caught the Trico. There's a Sand True right now that it just got in range. It should catch that Pokemon in range. So the Gramble's next. Let me see, it's it's blinking. It's the, Shan the Sand True actually ran away. Gramble ran away as well. So guys, it's not always gonna catch them, but just with it being kind of like an automated process, you really can't complain all too much. Just do be warned, like I said, there are gonna be times where it might be a shiny. And of course, whenever you do have a shiny on screen and you yourself are controlling it, of course you're gonna wanna feed it a golden raspberry and throw an ultra ball and get that excellent throw. So you never know, you might encounter a shiny with this thing. And the thing is the catch is not guaranteed. So that shiny may or may not run away. So just do keep that in mind. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are on the other side of downtown and really it's just, it wiped everything. There are no more spawns currently available. So guys, let's go ahead and look into my recents to see what we caught. So just right off the bat, no shinies, but just on this small little walk from one side of the bridge to the other, that was maybe about five minutes worth. Uh, here's a good barometer. We finished that Cresselia, so it caught all these 10 Mons right here. Nothing too special, as you can see. We have no Shinies. Let's check any four stars. No four stars were caught, but again, the beauty of the automation behind the Pokemon Go Plus Plus 
is divine. It's so cool when you're just in a busy area, enjoying a coffee, maybe enjoying a drink with your friends, and all of this is just happening behind the scenes. Like I said though, if you do put it on a table, it will vibrate really loud, but you can kind of just track to see what you're catching. If it blinks red, oh well, a Pokemon got away from you. There's one right now. Actually, because it was blinking the multicolored uh, colors, that means that a Pokestop was actually spun automatically. And so I'm, not, I'm sure you guys could have seen on screen that everything was spun automatically. And as a matter of fact, we're gonna turn back around and I'm gonna show you guys how it spins these Pokestops automatically. So it's really good. I know there's a lot of Pogoers who have trouble keeping up with a bunch of Pokeballs. And that's another thing I wanted to mention. My Pokeballs are running really low. I used to have about 500. Right now I'm down to about 152. So if you are gonna buy a Pokemon Go Plus Plus, Dude, that was a little loud. If you do purchase a Pokemon Go Plus Plus, I highly advise everyone to re-up on their Pokemon storage and their bag storage because you're definitely gonna need it and you're gonna wanna stock up on a ton of Pokeballs. Because with all of this happening behind the scenes, you're gonna be using 20 Pokeballs, what, every two minutes if you're in a busy area? So let's go back to where we were and I'm gonna show you guys how it spins all these Pokestops automatically. And it's just such a great way to stock up on revives, on potions. Just here, look, check it out. All right, some Pokestops are now in range. And as you can see, I received four items from that. Let's keep going and spinning that other one. Received three items from that one. There it is, that's the third Pokestop that spun automatically. But we do have a Mon right here. I think this is a Slurp Puff, if I'm not mistaken. It caught it, it's in range, it blinked green, so we did catch it. And as you can see for proof, uh, actually wait, it did not catch it. My apology, it actually ran away. I don't know why, you, you saw it was blinking green, right? That's weird. More Pokestops, watch it. It's gonna blink the multicolored colors, wait for it gonna get them in range here in just a second I hope let's get a little closer all right it's vibrating a lot here we go Pokemon in range and that's actually gonna spin automatically there we go Pokestop in range there it is got three items from that another Pokestop in range another three items from that so it's just so convenient guys I mean I could, I could go all day showing y'all, but this was just a small little demonstration of the power of this thing. And for some of you asking, yes, it works while you're driving. Now, of course, if you're driving down the interstate at 60 miles per hour, you're not gonna get that many spawns. But if you're traveling at anywhere from like 10 to 15 miles per hour down your neighborhood, this will catch everything and spin all those Pokestops. All right, guys, so we came to a, a little bit quieter part of downtown. We were recording on what we call the bridge here in our hometown is kind of iconic, but there were a lot of cars. Uh, we're gonna walk just a little bit more that way and get more spawns and just show you guys the effectiveness of the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. I've had it only for two, three days so far, and I am absolutely in love with its effectiveness and its usefulness. But like I was saying, you got to, got to re-up on your Pokemon stories because with all of this happening in the background, if you're in your busy downtown area, I can guarantee you that in about an hour, you're gonna be catching at least 100 mods. So what was it doing there? I think it was spinning, Swablu ran away. That's that. We do have, it looks like a, um, what's what's the name of that? It's the uh, pre-evolution of Lot Bunny. But anyway, uh, we're seeing right now it's vibrating for me already and then hopefully it catches those four mons right there for me pokeballs let's see what we caught though just here in this last minute so it looks like we caught actually all four of those look we got the pat rat let's uh, praise them let's just see this one the zero star whatever um nidoran though a one star eh i guess ladybug one star with almost full attack and then the boneri is of course atrocious at zero stars so man guys I know it's a little bit pricey at $55, but man, is it very useful, especially if you're a diehard Pogoer like myself. Now, granted, as you can see, my storage is up to 3,200, so I came well equipped. But if you don't have that much storage, at least invest maybe $10 worth of Pokecoins to up your storage. I promise you, it will help you out in the long run, especially with this auto catcher. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been my review of Niantic's Pokemon Go Plus 
Plus. It has a funny name. I know I really wish the naming was a little more straightforward, but it is what it is. So I think for $55, would I recommend it? The verdict, if you are an avid Pokemon Go player, absolutely. It's gonna save you a ton of time and you never know. I know there's a lot of shiny hunters out there. You may find several shinies throughout a month's time, if not more, by just having this thing run in the background. But on top of that, I think just the usefulness of having all those items, like just having those Poke Pokestops spun automatically, that I think in and of itself is what makes this so useful. Of course, I wish that you could use Ultra Balls or at least a better ball, maybe even a great ball, to increase the effectiveness of the, of the catches. You're not gonna catch every single one, but on average, you're gonna catch a good bit and you're gonna elevate your Stardust game 100%. So guys, I do wanna hear you guys' thoughts down below though. If you play Pokemon Go, would you consider picking this up? And if you already have it, drop your suggestions on what you would change, what you like about it down in the comment section below. As I always say guys, Make sure to stay hydrated. It's almost the end of summer, but you know, it's still gonna be a pretty, pretty hot uh, beginning to the fall. So I'm out for now, but I can't wait to catch you all in the next video.